I know you've been working on something called Flow GPT. I don't know exactly what it is, uh, but I'm thrilled to see what you're working on. Obviously, I've worked with your course in the past and sort of some of the technology you've been working on, and it has not let me down up to this point. So I can't imagine what you have next. <laughs> Well, I think this is going to blow your mind. I have been talking for a long time about how uh, GPT end user training being an ultimate GPT end user is so important. And uh, in org use cases, we're just coming and it's going to be like a tidal wave. And this is just sort of the first feeling of that rolling wave. And uh, I'm so stoked to show you. So I'm just going to go ahead and share it. So we're just going to start right out inside the org because I think that's where the magic is. That's what everybody wants to see. So I'll show that to you as well. Um, here, we're just starting out on an opportunity record, and this is the magic of Flow GPT. So what we've done is we've created a cool screen flow where users can go in and just click the engagement tab on an opportunity, and you're presented with this screen. And what you're about to see is the magic um, of Flow GPT in the background for a user reaching out and getting the next best actions in a very structured and specific and predefined format for this specific opportunity using information from the org. So let's hit it. Boom, okay, here it is. So I did no work here. It was all Flow GP GPT. Flow GPT grabbed the data, went through and referenced standard operating procedures that were gathered by the GPT specialist, in this case me, uh, from the company and implemented those into Flow GPT so that FlowGPT would provide the best next steps for this opportunity based on the specific standard operating procedures for this company. Check it out. It's structured in a few different ways. We've got the current stage, negotiation review, next immediate steps, and here's the blurb on what actually should be done for the next steps. And then you've got a due date, suggested due date within 48 hours. And then right after that, you get the actual suggested communication template. And then this is an email that you can copy and massage and use to communicate with the customer for the next steps. I think this okay. is incredible. <laughs> yeah, that's really impressive. I mean, you clicked a button and like a second later, suddenly we have next steps. I don't even know what the opportunity said. Now, I will say I'm putting a lot of trust in this feedback, right? Because... I mean, basically, it just pushed out to me some pretty standard stuff, current stage negotiation review. It says some pretty specific stuff too, though, like suggested due date within the next 48 hours. If I can pick on a couple of things, I'm going to pick on a couple of things just because I like to test and make sure stuff is valid. Like within the next 48 hours, that's really a specific detail. I'd be interested to know if there's reasoning behind that specific detail. The other thing... Um, is that I see in that first paragraph, it's saying you're following up on a recent discussion uh, and pricing was a concern. So, all right, I'm going to pick on those two. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but like 48 hours, pricing is a concern. Is that a reality or is this just making up email content? Yeah, well, it's definitely making things up, but <laughs> it's made up based on the real needs of the opportunity. So coming back to the opportunity, it's United Oil Installations, and you do see that's the actual stage that it's in. Okay. But then you come down here, and uh, there's some user comments from the last person who had to touch this opportunity. So they don't like the price, but I think we can push them to pay. <laughs> They're already a customer anyway. We're close to closing on this one. Let's wait them out at least a week. So okay. wh why are we asking for a 48-hour follow-up if the request is for in at least a week? Well, here are the actual procedures that are being used by the org, by GPT. GPT is reading this and using it as context for the decision-making on the record. Wow. And so here under negotiation review, we have the requirements for negotiation and review. And here you've got contact customer within 48 hours, even though someone else said, hey, let's not do that. Th this is, I mean, it's really incredible. So you could have a, a standard operating procedure. And is there a limit to like that page you showed was like a, a one page SOP. I mean, what if it was like a 50 page SOP? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. You can go, you can go as, as large as you want. There's different ways you can handle it. It's just like your chat GPT prompts, uh, all the information you stick into that prompt goes into the L, uh, the language model and then out comes the output based on your prompt itself. So imagine the prompt engineering that we teach at Air Force training to take you from um, you know beginning user to end uh, expert user for chat GPT and other GPT tools. It's the same type of information that's going to um, 
accelerate your ability to come in here and step in and just build incredible flows. I want to show you how simple this flow actually is. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, before you do that, I just want to push on the point that like, this is sick. Like if you think about use cases for clients, you're talking about having, let's go with a, a 50 page standard operating procedure for the sales team. Let, maybe it's 10 pages, whatever. I don't know what the norm is today, but you've got the sales team and they've got their their sales pipeline, their process, the stages that they move through. And they have different operating procedures for each step in that. And this one is negotiation and review. And GPT is immediately way faster than the human brain able to go grab this opportunity and say, this is the stage that it's in. Let me go reference the standard operating procedure and come up with some logical next steps. And on top of that, let me put what well, we know what GPT is good at. Let me put some written communication together write up this email, referencing information from the actual opportunity, and then putting that out. I mean, I'm thinking like if I have a new sales rep that just started on Friday and now it's Monday, they can actually do meaningful work on opportunities day one on the job instead of having to sit in a week of training because GPT is like their training assistant. And I guess more specifically, Flow GPT inside of Salesforce is the training assistant. Um, this is remarkable. It's it's too cool. Yeah, I would love to see behind the curtain. Like, if we can do that, that'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. I would love to show you because um, I think that this. I think one of the great things about Flow GPT technology is that it's it's very simple to use. Um, you can and you can build uh, the most simple flow. In this case, we have just a screen flow, which calls a subflow. That subflow is what's doing the GPT work. So we have the two screens that we saw at, as the end user, and then here this subflow is right here and this is it i mean this is all that you do that looks so simple like i sit on linkedin and i see people post these like crazy complicated flows where it would take me an hour to sit down and just try to figure out what they're doing this is like two steps the magic is in this step right here this is the step that's actually going out and um, sending the information it's the prompt it's the response and this is the step that gpt specialists have to manage. So the step is actually complex if you drill down into it. Uh, and that's why you have to have actual training and you have to know what you're doing. And of course, we're working with org data. So you really need to know what you're doing. And this is why I've been preaching that GPT specialists are going to be the key of the future of GPT yeah. within Salesforce. But is you that build... like legit what you used for that opportunity though? Like the stuff you just showed us, that's for real what functions, the functionality we just saw. Exactly. That's okay. it. Wow. Yep. Um, but you can, everyone's seen those massive, crazy flows that you just mentioned. And yeah. this is a GPT, mm. a flow GPT built okay. on a case object. And I won't bore you with what all it does, but, uh, multiple steps where GPT is used and decisions are made based off of the GPT responses. And you can imagine how interestingly complex and incredibly powerful things that you can start to do when you take a look at something like this. You know, I think a lot of people think of um, GPT as a Salesforce professional as like using chat GPT to like prompt it and tell it to do stuff, but you're showing us like really the next level of like, no, 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 no. This is inside of a Salesforce org. These prompts are not sitting in some browser where you're giving it prompts. This is all happening as a systematic pre-programmed approach inside of an org specific to a client. That's a totally different beast. Where do you get training for this type of functionality? Um, how do you facilitate taking someone from maybe being an admin or early into Salesforce or trying to differentiate themselves on the job? Is this something, is this like a demo or is this something people could really build if they, if they knew what to do? No, this, this is actually something that you can build if you know what to do. Really? And that's, that's my whole goal. My whole goal is to feed Salesforce professionals the tools that they need to be successful with GPT. And so mm -hmm. that's why I'm even demoing this today to you. We've incorporated um, a new set of modules within the Air Force training material, and I'll get to it here. Um, of course, we have all the continued modules that we have had up until this point, which really gets you started with GPT, um, really gets you to that expert end user uh, case and really help you understand the technology. But 
you might just want to skip straight to module eight like me and come straight to learning flow gpt you can do that i highly recommend you cover the other material as well but you absolutely it's set up so that you can absolutely come here and just go through um, all the lessons inside of module eight and start to build your own in org flow gpt uh, use cases and i think your clients your recruiters your customers uh, your own personal uh, self-image are all going to be super excited to be able to harness the capability of GPT inside Salesforce and be delivering these types of solutions. It's a really big deal. That's that's incredible. I, I mean, I just want to give you kudos for the fact that uh, <laughs> this is really forward thinking on taking GPT out of a separate you know, tab where you're just prompting it and actually bringing it inside of the Salesforce org. Uh, I'm excited. I know other people are going to be excited. Um, I just want to jump in and start using this training.